make some noise for Andy Carr! Good evening, I'm Andy Cox. And for any of you here that thought I was a Muppet, I'm going to give you a life lesson. Get yourself, I'm talking to you. Get yourself over to Ikea and buy yourself a full length mirror. Could be game changing. Anyway, I'm going to grab the microphone because uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm the king of gesticulation. You tie my hands behind my back, I can't even talk. So uh, yesterday was a prime example. I was in the House of Commons, and this isn't a joke by the way, and I was presenting on behalf of the black country and being very passionate, etc., etc. And Boris Johnson said at the end of my speech, how considerate of you, thinking there was somebody deaf in the audience. And there was me, you know, like, well, the usual stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, but, yeah, don't you think it's weird these days? We're all on the spectrum. Do you know, I've got more isms than some women have had in a lifetime. <laughs> That's asms, isn't it? But anyway, I want to talk about a condition I've got, which is called dyspraxia, which is neither an ism or an asm, but it's a good story, so come on, crowd, go with me. Which means that I am, have no eye-to-ball coordination. And no, Malcolm, that's not a euphemism. So, um, yeah, I'm really clumsy, and that spills over into every facet of my life. Recent one at work, we had a, a, an inquiry for a guy who wanted to convey tanning pills. Okay, so uh, very plummy, and I hate posh people, they do my head in. And this guy hadn't got one plum in his mouth, he'd swallowed the whole f fruit bowl. And uh, he went, uh, I'd like to convey my tanning pills. And I went, oh, Jesus Christ. You know what, me and my mates used to take those in the 80s to get our tans up. I look back now, we'd all been bloody tangoed. And he went, no, 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 I'm talking leather. Kinky. No, he wasn't talking about that either. So don't get excited, you at the front. And, um, yeah. He talked about the start of the process, and I went, you feed them to cows? And he went, no, needs to sell bombed, and we didn't win the order, and uh, I went down faster than Cynthia Payne on personal services, and we all know she only went down for a price, and I very much doubt he could have afforded it. But anyway, moving on, um, I went to the most fabulous funeral of a school friend of mine, and it was a humanist service, and the lady that conducted it, and not one of those conductors like me that talks with her hands all the time, and not one of those. No, Malcolm, I'm not one and that's a, that's a ticket inspector. And, um, yeah, she was fabulous. White hair, blue fringe, but I don't judge, so let's just get that straight from the start. And she made a comment about housekeeping, and she said, mobile phones, so don't tolerate them. Turn them to off. Otherwise, you will be my next client. And I'm not talking weddings or funerals. Wow. Anyway, my mate wanted to be the last one to leave the building, so there he is in his box waiting to go in the furnace. And uh, I went up to her outside and gave her a kiss on both cheeks and went, do you know what? That is the best funeral I've ever been to. And she went, you cheeky <laughs> I am the best. So I've decided I'm going to knock that <laughs> bitch off a perch. But anyway, <laughs> moving on, my dad. Not great at parenting. So uh, his idea of a treat for somebody like me that's got a massive heart, loves animals. I mean, the amount of spiders and flies we've got at home is just legendary. And, um, yeah, I used to go shooting every Saturday, loathed it. And um, we used to go to Shropshire, which, uh, yeah, you know, beware of the shires. And uh, Dad used to get p***ed in the gun club after we'd been uh, shooting for maybe, well, I don't know, what, 12 hours? And there I was, lining up all the hares, the rabbits, the pheasants, you name it, I lined it up. There I am, doing the Lord's Prayer. And one of Dad's mates comes out and p***s himself laughing, so Dad went over impressed, so that was the end of that. But you know what? I ain't goody two-shoes, and if they'd f***ing listened, I was chanting it backwards. But anyway, my dad is not all bad, okay? And he absolutely loved his dogs. And he had a night nightly ritual. Before he went to bed, he always went downstairs and pulled off his boxers. He loved those dogs. <laughs> anyway, my mom, love her. Black country through and through. She really had it tough, but you know, and you'll relate to it there in the check jacket, really nouveau riche. Um, <laughs> fabulous. My mom, I'm not joking, Hyacinth Bouquet had nothing on my mom. She's that posh these days, she can only blow her nose if it's on a Waitrose tissue. But anyway, I wanted to give something back to mom, so I entered her into small, uh, Business Woman of the Year. It was a national uh, competition, but the category we entered in was our road in Lye, and we were the only entry, and I'm pleased to say we won. And uh, I suggested to mom that we went on the train to London. She was pretty appalled. 
been a bit sort of nouveau. So instead, we went on one of Richard Branson's Pendolinos to Euston, and she was good with that. So uh, we went to London, and she wasn't sure which hotel we were going to get changed in, so I kept that a bit sort of mystique. So as I put my 30p in the turnstile and pushed her through and said, you're in uh, room nine, i.e. cubicle nine, and uh, yes, yeah, in she went. So uh, we got in the taxi on the way to Buck Palace to see Queenie and her kids, and Mum said, I I'm sure you said we'll change in a hotel, and I said, mm, yeah. And she said, you said the shard is chic. I said, no, Mum, the clue was, it smells of shit. But anyway, moving on, furry muff, she said. And uh, yeah, that was a bit of a treat for my mom. But you know what? Great character. Have you ever wondered why they don't name toilets like they do hotel rooms? You know, you stay in a hotel room, you stay in the Balmoral or whatever. I'm absolutely convinced I stayed in the George Michael suite in, when I got changed. Do you know what I mean? It really had a ring to it. But anyway, right, my mom. Love the 80s. Crystal Carrington, she wore the bob. You know, Dallas Dynasty. My mum had that stainless steel hurricane bob that never <laughs> moved. Loved it. But after that, it was the 90s, and along came Ab Fab, and mum reinvented herself as Patsy. Which was all well and good until I went on holiday, and the lads on this table will vouch that... Um, in fact, that table, because it's bright. Um, the lads will vouch that uh, mum, absolutely, she uh, learnt a new word. <laughs> I've made a <laughs> to myself pulled out in front of me, this, that. So I said to my mom, you know, mom, do you know what that actually means? And she went, yeah, silly Billy. Mm, okay, but bless her, you know, she's here tonight, 75, pouting like posh spice, so take my hat off to her. <laughs> now, moving on a generation, my fabulous grandmother, loved her to be, she's no longer with us. Yes, she's a stiff Malcolm, but not the sort that you like. So, um, yeah, Nan loved shopping. Oh, did she love shopping? So uh, she was on the bus, because we don't have buses in the black country. And uh, she used to love to go to Meril, because there's only 25 letters in the black country alphabet. We don't have H. And um, she sat next to her friend, Denise, and she said, oh, I can't wait to get up to Meril. And Denise said, well, why is that? She said, because I'm a nymphomaniac when I get there. Denise looked at her. She said, I don't think you are. Well, I am. She said, do you mean? And she went, oh, I know what I mean. I mean kleptomaniac. Anyway, that was the end of that friendship. So uh, Christmas, Nan said to me, do you know what? I've I haven't had my little woods Christmas card drop on the... On the Matt from Denise this year. I said, but Nan, you described yourself as a sex mad, um, oh God, a sex mad um, shoplifter. And she went, oh right. And I said, Nan, I wouldn't worry about Denise. Do you know what? Common with a capital C, some bed face, Greek islands every year, knickers off, lesbos, syphilis, she'd done the lot. And I mean, <laughs> come on, Denise, I knew a sister venereal, <laughs> dirty cow. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Right. All I want to say now, I've got a very famous quote from a really good friend of mine, and he's called Hannibal Lecter, and he said, I'd love to stay and talk longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. <laughs> yeah.